Welcome back to Talking Story. My name is John Minton. This is another weekly reader roundup. And I know the first thing for anyone that's ever watched a weekly reader before, I'm in the wrong place. I am not in my Fortress of Solitude, um, coming at you at the end of a week with a nice frosty beverage, although I do have a beverage. Um, I'm doing this a little bit early. It's actually Saturday uh, <laughs> because I'm going to the beach for the weekend with my lovely wife and my father-in-law. We're going to get away. Uh, so I wanted not to miss a weekly roundup with you guys. So I'm doing this just a tad early. So that's why I'm in front of the green screen. Uh, but in any case, I'm happy to be here. I hope your week went as well as mine. I hope it was wonderful. I hope you had as great a reading week as I had. And let's go over that reading, reading week real quick. I wrapped up The Fall of Night. This is the second in the uh, Dead of Night zombie apocalypse series by Jonathan Mawberry. Uh, this was so good. This is just, if you're looking for a zombie apocalypse, this is it. it, it it's unflinching. It's brutal. The character work is so wonderful. You're gonna root for these people even though you know in the title, it's the apocalypse. They're probably not gonna make it. You can't stop yourself from turning pages hoping that they do. Um, and just again, it does not look away. It delivers every gruesome zombie goodness that you want it to have. Uh, there's just two more thin volumes left in this apocalypse series. I might wrap it all up this month because I'm, I'm blowing through these spooky reads so quick because it's been such a fun, fun ride. This, I cannot rate it high enough for a zombie book. And um, this will absolutely be on a list coming up shortly. Uh, and I also thank you, Andrew at Andrew's Wizardly Reads. I put out a vampire list. Not my all-time favorite vampire list, but just a vampire list of vampire stories that are kind of off the beaten track that maybe people haven't heard of because I love vampire stories. And uh, Andrew said this is one of his favorite go-to vampire books, and I had not read it before. I had not read any Christopher Buhlman before. And wow, thank you so much for opening my eyes to this writer. It, it, he, he walks that knife edge between beauty and disgusting and somehow he stays right in the middle um and it, it, it's just i loved it i thought it was a great great vampire read uh so perfect for spooky season and i what else can i say but thank you andrew for bringing this to my attention and i'm wondering where i should go next for christopher bielman uh, looking into him i'm thinking between two fires is kind of where i want to hit next uh, if you're out there and you've read a lot of Christopher Buhlman, you like Christopher Buhlman, if you can give me a recommendation of where to go after The Lesser Dead, hit me up in the comment section. I would love to have some direction on that. So now what have I picked up to start? I have picked up Leslie Smith's recommendation from Nerdy Narrative, if you have not checked her out, for horror top notch. My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. I had never read any Stephen Graham Jones. I have just cracked it. I'm just, I think, 30, 40 pages, 30, somewhere between 30 and 40 pages in. I already love it. This is written so perfectly for me. Anyone that grew up with like copies of Fangoria strewn around their bedroom, uh, anyone that, that found comics from those amazing Warren publications back in the day of creepy and eerie, and that was where your heart was and what you loved. And this book just speaks to me uh, on every level because of that. It's such a love letter, and it's the, the, I already love some of these characters. And like I say, I'm only 30, 40 pages in, so I suspect I'll be blowing through this in a couple days. Uh, and be on to my next pick before we all meet again to check in on a Sunday. So I'm going to go ahead and say what's up next is Dreamers Throne by Seth Ring. Seth was nice enough to send me this. I have never read any lit RPG, but this just by the cover uh, looked so perfect for spooky season. It looks so atmospheric and I cannot wait to crack into this uh, and, and see what Seth Ring's book is all about. So I'm going to go straight to there. And that kind of wraps up the reading uh, where I'm at, guys. Uh, spooky season has been 
phenomenal so far. I hope yours is going every bit as well. Uh, what have I been watching? I have not got a chance to watch the last episode of Changeling on Apple+, Plus, so I don't know how that season wraps up. I have one more episode to go. Overall, I would say it's been good. I thought it had a bit of a shaky start uh, because there is so much coming at you through the multi-generational aspect of it, going non-linearly back and forth between different aspects of this family. This last episode I just watched, the penultimate episode, I, I just... The thing I loved about the book was that it was so concrete, even though these themes of a dark fairy tale filtering through into the very real brick-and-mortar reality of New York, the storytelling was so concrete and so easy to hold on to, and I think the person that wrote this screenplay to adapt it and the director went so much off of the beam as far as visual, artistic license. They wanted to do something different and groundbreaking and push boundaries, and I'm for all of that as an artist, but I just think it got a little bit in its own way as far as telling the story for me. Uh, so I'm hoping this last episode wraps it all up in a way that I can really say, wow, this this is what that book deserves. Because for me, that, that book absolutely uh, would make it on a top list for me, which is coming up uh, in, the, in the very near future. Um, what else? Uh, uh, I did start uh, Good Omen season two, and I'm a bit let down with that as well. I just, I, the two guys are amazing together. Anytime you get those two actors in a room, uh, it j just even them talking over Zoom to each other is, is a treat. Uh, I love their work. I love them being together. Uh, but I do think it, it doesn't have that concrete story to tell. It seems like it's meandering a little bit. It doesn't really seem to have a plot that is on rails, that is driving. It just seems to be a little bit lackadaisical for me. It's just not grabbing me. So I hope that turns around. It's only six episodes, and I think I'm two or three in. Um, and so there's that. I'm all caught up with... Uh, Lower Decks, which again, I say, is the funnest Star Trek. If you've ever enjoyed Star Trek, you absolutely must check it out. It is a laugh-out-loud blast. Um, and that's kind of it for all things I've been watching, other than, you know, the preseason NBA. Um, so that kind of wraps that up. Last week, I knew I was going to be doing this early, so I knew I might not have a full week's worth of stuff to come at you with. I asked if any of you out there... Uh, any of you people that check in with me Sunday after Sunday would have any questions you would want uh, for me to answer, any curiosities about me that you would like answered. And some of you did send me some questions, and I got, I'm going to put my cheaters on here. And, um, oh, the first one was uh, from TGI Bridays. says, you know, I wear a lot of t-shirts or a lot of shirts that uh, seem to be tied to a North Carolina biking community. That is absolutely true. I am. Uh, biker. I love uh, gravel, uh, road, single track. Um, I I I don't live in Raleigh. I live in kind of a smaller town between Charlotte and Winston Salem. So I, I have some great single track mountain bike trails here in my town. I I uh, have some great gravel uh, trails here in my town through greenways. Uh, it, it's just absolutely gorgeous, and I love. To bike. Uh, I ride uh, specialized mountain bike and specialized gravel road bike. And um, yeah, absolutely love it. It's something my wife and I do together. And that's one of the reasons why we're heading out to the beach this weekend is we're going to take some, some nice long rides and take a look at the beach from um, on a bike. So that's something that we love to do. And it's, it's a great way that we found to get exercise and take it easy on our joints uh, as we as we get into our later years, as they say. Um, now, the next, I believe, eight questions all come from Trace Jefferson, who takes the prize for curiosity. Um, let's see, how many long series am I doing right now? Long series authors, how many am I doing? I have no idea. I I I I haven't. I I shudder to count how many long series that I am wrapped up in at the moment. 
uh, and I don't even. And it, it, I tri- I love trilogies because I can knock those out in three months if I do one a month. Long series, man. I sometimes I just lose my way, and that's what's happened with Wheel of Time, which I want to get back to next year. Um, but I, I know I'm in the middle of more than I want to count, more than I want to admit. So I'm just going to go with that. Uh, when I finish a read, do I like a palate cleanser, like a little short book or novella, or like just some short stories? I do love short stories between my longer reads. Uh, that's why I generally always try to have a book of short stories around, uh, or like, uh, a, a weird tales, uh, with some short stories in it or something that I can grab and kind of sometimes it, it differs for me. If it's like through the spooky season, I've just gone from one book to the next without any palate cleansers at all. Uh, but if, if it's like a big, like if I set down the next, uh, a uh, big chunker like Words of Radiance or something, sometimes I need to let that ruminate and stew for a moment before I go on. Uh, and then I kind of need a, a palate cleanser. And I do prefer short stories for that. Um, have I ever done a book challenge, a book reading challenge? I have not. Uh, I, I've only been doing this, I think, for right around five months now. So I have not joined a team and done a book challenge. Um, that does kind of sound cool, though. It's probably something I'm sure I'll do in the future. Question five, how do you control your TBR? I think anyone that has watched or wants to go back and watch my book haul from my birthday month of September last month will know I'm not controlling it at all. It controls me. I am completely drowning. I am out of control. Uh, I have given up any sense that I might ever have control. I, I, I have just completely given over myself to the idea of chaos when it comes to my TBR. Uh, and I'm enjoying the hell out of it that way. I, I, I love books. I've always loved books. And to just, to, to just see so many options and, and so many coming at me, it's actually made me happy. So it's not, it's not chaos that speaks to my OCD nature, which I sometimes have, uh, in any adverse way. So I seem to be enjoying it so far. So I'm just going to let the good times and the chaos roll. Uh, number six, Will my son, who is the other half of this team that does all the editing and everything else, will he ever teach me the editing side of this? How best to, to describe this? There's a look of terror that washes over my son's face when I'm leaning over his shoulder to see what the editing process is, or maybe if I could do something, or maybe if he could teach me something, or maybe if I could be involved at all, uh, I think he's pretty clear on, uh, you know, we, 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 we paid his education, he learned this at college, and that's where, that's where my, you know, part of this ends. He, he wants me nowhere near his computer, nowhere near these programs, nowhere near anything uh, that he's in charge of. Uh, so it, I'm, I'm going to stay as, as well away from that as I can for his own, uh, happiness. So number seven, do I audiobook? I do not. Um, from so many years in the theater, I have a hard time doing audiobooks because I get caught up in listening to the actor or actress and thinking about, the choices they're making and why they would make that choice. Uh, it's the same way when I when I watch a performance. Uh, I, you're, you're always watching it going, wow, what a great choice. Oh my God, I, I you know, I, I got to try and put that in my toolbox or I got to try and incorporate that or or uh, their, their commitment for that choice wasn't quite there. Or they didn't quite hit the mark. Like I can't shut that off. Um, so when I, I listen to audiobooks. I can't shut that off. And for not shutting that off, I realize that a couple pages have gone by and I'm not quite sure what's happened in the story because I've been too uh, tuned into the performance of the narrator. So I, I, just, I just read everything myself and I'm extremely, for whatever reason, I'm very visual, probably from all the years reading scripts and trying to see it. Um, I just, there's a whole movie that, that unspools as I, as I read and that's where my enjoyment comes from. And I, I, um, that's just the way I like it, just the way I do. So I do not audiobook. 
Uh, do I use a library? My wife does. We have a really nice library here in town. I'm not against a library. I think the libraries are amazing. Uh, it's just, I've always had a bit of the collector bug. And if it's something that, if it's an artist, I want to go on their journey with them or an author that I, I want to see what they have to say or a book that I want to read, it's probably a book I want to have on the shelf. And where I fall into problem, where my checkbook falls into problem, if it's the book I want to have on my shelf, I want to have that collector's edition that who knows how much it costs on my shelf. So that's that's sometimes where I fall into problems. But because of that collector bug in me, uh, I don't use the library a lot because I want it on my shelf. Uh, number nine, do I set goals for pages or how much time I want to spend uh, reading to get through the amount of reading that I've been getting through lately. I usually set a goal. I don't set a time because I found depending on what I'm reading, the time is different. Uh, the print's smaller. It, it, it's dealing with some type of philosophy that makes me put that book down and think about it for a moment before I pick it back up and go on. And that takes, you know, that takes time to process. So time-wise, I don't think about a goal of how much time I want to put in on a day-to-day -day basis uh, because the book kind of dictates that. I always shoot for probably around 100 pages a day. Uh, 100 pages a day is not impossible to achieve uh, for me. If I don't watch a lot of TV, if I don't do a lot of things, this is kind of the hobby I love at the moment. Um, I used to do quite a few hours of gaming, and that has kind of fallen away because I find myself, since I've come back to books, I, I find myself enamored of what I was having a problem with in, in games lately, I always thought games were such an amazing new way to tell a narrative, a new medium to tell a narrative in, and, and I was just, I was so interested in it. And then as as we've gone along, I see gameplay getting, uh, the, the, the what's in vogue is to make it harder. Uh, so to me, my skill level, I get bogged down. It cuts me down from going on in the narrative and getting the story. Uh, so it's almost like those people don't want to tell me their story unless my thumb acuity can hit a certain point, and that would start to aggravate me. So I guess I'm not a good candidate for games, who I found. Uh, so when I, since coming back to book, it's like the person that wrote this book 100% wants me to have that story. They're going to give it to me on a silver platter. All I have to do is pick it up and read it, and I have had the most fun. So I have not missed the hours I put into gaming that I'm now putting into reading. I'm finding a reading vastly more fulfilling. Uh, having said that, I, I do have some games on order that I want to give a try to, so we'll, we'll see what happens in the future. Um, now, hitting my 100 pages a day might become a little bit more difficult because I do tend to read after work, uh, <coughs> after dinner, or after I go to the gym or bike with my wife. I, I sit down and read a little bit and try and hit that mark. But now that my Spurs are playing kind of, you know, every other day, 82 game season takes a lot of time. And so I, some of that reading may fall, I may start falling short of hitting those goals. Uh, we will see. But I do always try and shoot for about 100 pages a day. And that's all the questions from Trace Jefferson. I hope I answered them for you, Trace. Um, to your satisfaction and what you want to know. Now, I have one more question. This is from Patty C. What work do I do and how do I schedule my reading in and around my work? Um, gosh, my my work history has been very sundry and varied. I, I have done everything. Uh, living a life in the theater, I've done every job you can imagine uh, between professional gigs in the theater uh, until I was co-founder and started building my own theater company. And then from there, um, uh, when, when we had our son, uh, the, the hours and also from there, I actually was co-owner and went into business uh, owning a comic book store. And from there, I kind of retired for a good number of years. And uh, I, 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 got, I got bored with myself. I wanted to have somewhere to go every day and something to do every day. So uh, currently, the job I do is I'm a property manager at a self-storage facility because it's five minutes from my house and I can bike to work and I, I have somewhere to go every day and, and things to keep the wheels turning and, uh, and great people to work with. And, uh, and uh, so I, I found myself happier filling my days like that as opposed to early retirement, which 
was absolutely wonderful, but I just uh, wanted to start doing a little bit more with my days. And uh, and I hope, hope Patty, see that that answers your question there. And I think that's all the questions I got, guys. I thought tin was really pretty good. I really appreciate you you guys having interest and you asking questions, and I hope I answered them all for you. If you have any more, Sundays are a great time. Hit me up in comments. I love comments. I know you know I love comments because I try to answer them the second I get them, if it's at all possible. I just love talking back and forth with you guys. I have had the absolute most fun so far here on BookTube. And, and I am just absolutely gobsmacked. We just put out a big thank you. We just hit 750 subscribers. I, I, I couldn't, my, I, son, my son told me I couldn't even believe it. I couldn't even believe it. it, it it's just, I'm so thrilled uh, that you're all here. And I'm so thrilled to get to spend time with you and get to be involved with your reading journey and you get to be involved with my reading journey and get to build this channel and this community to where we can all uh, come together and discuss story and uh, make our lives just, in my case anyway, a lot happier than, than when I had started. So thank you, thank you so much for spending your time with me and, and clicking that like or that subscribe button. It, it's absolutely... Uh, been humbling to me and and just absolutely floored me, I have to tell you. Uh, so thank you so much for that. Um, if this is your first time here and you'd like to like and subscribe, come back and spend time with us here on Talking Story, please do that. If you're one of the regs here all the time, you know what I always say, if you're checking out a weekly reader with me, that means you're book people. And if you're book people in my book, that makes you the best people Thank you so much for joining me here on the Weekly Reader on Talking Story. My name is John Minton, and we will see you again, I'm sure.